Hello, my name is Shelly, and usually I would now be saying that I am your homegirl of hermeneutics, but today we're going to switch it up because I'm coming to you as an investigative reporter. So I'm a little more buttoned up today, got to be into the role, into the headspace, um, because as we are closing out the Valentine's Day season, February, the season of love, uh, there have been a lot of Christian couple videos here on Bernie Sanders internet. And because I am very, very single, I don't really need Christian couple advice right now. I don't need the relationship goals. I don't need the how to build a relationship. Right now, I am on the side of how do I even get someone's attention in order to pursue the idea of being in a relationship. So we are going to take some time and do some investigating into the famous story of Ruth and Boaz. How a girl went from being so tragically single to in a relationship with a wealthy, handsome man of God. And we're not even going to get into where the relationship starts. We're just going to get to the point where Boaz first noticed Ruth and what she did to get there so that we, us single ladies, can take some notes for next year. So I am now going to present to you three pieces of evidence from the story of Ruth, Ruth chapter one and a little bit of chapter two, up into the point where Boaz first notices our homegirl Ruth. Now let's build some context for our case. So it starts off with Ruth, Orpah, and Naomi. And so Ruth and Orpah are both the daughters-in-law of Naomi. So Naomi has at least two sons and they're married to Ruth and Orpah. And tragically, both Naomi's husband and Ruth's and Orpah's husbands, all three of them die. And Naomi is now realizing that she is a widow in a foreign land and she must go to be with God and be with her people. So she decides she's going to peace out and Orpah and Ruth are like, we love you. Let's come with you. Uh, but Naomi's like, no, you guys are young. You still have a chance. You can still find a husband here. So you guys should stay here. So Orpah basically is like, cool, peace out. But Ruth says, no, she's going to stick by Naomi. She is going to serve God with Naomi and she is going to love her as her friend. So lesson number one, ladies, is that Ruth was loyal to her faith-filled community. She was dedicated to God. She didn't turn back to the gods of her land, the idols of her land in a time of tragedy. She stuck to God and stuck to Naomi, who was with her in service to God. So they hit the road and start traveling to head back to where they came from. And as they're traveling back to Naomi's home country, uh, Naomi is not handling things very well. But granted, she just lost her husband and at least two of her sons. So her situational depression is very much warranted. Um, so we conclude chapter one with Naomi changing her name from Naomi, which means pleasant, to Mara, which means bitter. So she's not doing so hot. Now, in order to take care of herself and her mother-in-law, Ruth decides that she is going to go work in the fields in order to gain favor of a man named Boaz. Now, I don't know about you, but when I am trying to gain the attention of a worthy gentleman, my first instinct is not to go into the hot sun and pick up grain in the dirt and sweat. Ah, oh, as if. Now, Ruth's end goal wasn't to come marry Boaz. Her end goal was to care for Naomi. So she wanted to gain the favor of this worthy man in order to care for her friend. So. While I don't necessarily think I would go out into the field and pick up dirt to impress a man, I think I would do that to take care of my friend. So what we're going to write down as lesson number two is that she was willing to sacrificially love her community. Ruth demonstrated loyalty by sticking by Naomi in her toughest times and sacrificially loved her by laying down her own pride in order to care for her. Now this is where Boaz walks onto the scene. He sees all the workers, says, hey, how you doing? God bless ya. And notices Ruth because she's new. She's a new young woman. And he goes to what was essentially his assistant regional manager and asks, who is this young lady? 
and the assistant regional manager tells him that this young woman came early in the morning, she's been working nonstop with only a short break, and she is just super diligent, and goes on to tell Boaz about her story, about how she's there to care for her mother-in-law, and how they had this tragic loss in their family, and now she is a hard worker for her friend. And what we learn from chapter two of Ruth is that Boaz noticed Ruth because of her hard work, but he gave her favor because of the loyalty and the sacrificial love that she had for her friend. What strikes me about this story is that everything Ruth did that got Boaz to notice her, she did out of love for God and out of love for her community. That's it. She had abandoned the opportunity to get a husband when she followed Naomi to return to Moab and left where they were. She could have very easily been like Opera, Opera, Opera. She could have been like Arpa and stayed in the land and worshiped false idols and found a husband there. But instead she pursued God's calling for her life. She stayed with the community that was serving God and ultimately God gave her favor. And all this talk about hard work brought me back to Proverbs 31, which if you don't know is God's guide to how to be the baddest woman in the game. And it talks about having willing working hands. It talks about being strong for your task. It talks about women who provides for their household. And if that does not describe Ruth to a T, then I don't know what does. See, just like Ruth, our motivation to be a Proverbs 31 woman should come from God and not to impress or gain favor of a man. But what we also recognize is that a man of God, a man who is worthy, as Naomi called Boaz, is one that's going to recognize someone who is diligently working and loving and serving the community on God's behalf. And that's all you have to do. The story of Ruth and Boaz gets talked a lot for God's favor, but I also want to talk about God's timing. I think it's significant that one of the greatest love stories in the Bible starts at this point of tragedy, of loss, and it involves a woman who has been married before. She's not this young, ripe, you know, first pick for marriage woman, but God favored her with his timing because of her devotion to him. The great favor that God showed throughout her story was not that Boaz eventually married her, but that her whole family was redeemed that because she followed God's will and God's calling and was loyal to her community and she was willing to work hard, God favored her entire family. So too long didn't read. The best way to get a man of God's attention is to be a woman of God. Serve God, serve your community, serve your people, work hard, do what God has called you to do and trust that God will honor your work however he sees fit. If you've gotten to the end of this video, I highly recommend you check out another video I made a little over a year ago called Why I Am Not Praying for My Future Husband, where I talk about idolatry in relationships and how God completely shifted my perspective. But that is the end of this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you soon. Bye! Bang, gang, gang, gang.